So Colorado's growing and growing and growing. Where are they all coming from? To find out from Constellation Consulting. Thank you for being here, Ben Higgin. Thank you having me. Thank you for having me. All right. I saw a study that you did that caught my eye, and I, I was just mesmerized because I've had this gut feeling that our state has been infested by out-of-staters who are also bringing a, a pretty left-leaning uh, political viewpoint. For those of us who were raised in Colorado, there was a Colorado spirit. And I, I sum that up as uh, the, the craving to make your own decisions versus a Californian spirit of, I want to make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I opened up this report and it, it was fascinating. What, why did you do it, first of all? Well, because I am also from Colorado and shared the same gut feeling that you did, that we're being overrun from, by people from out of state. So I decided to sit down and say, all right, well, is this actually true? Turns out it is true in a big way, and the vast majority of those people are, in fact, coming from California. <laughs> Go figure. What a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> who would have guessed? So in other words, uh, the rats sing from a sinking ship over there as, as bureaucracy and taxes and regulation make it really unaffordable, they come here, they buy a house that seems cheap to them. I steal by California standards, uh, steal right? Steal by, right. <laughs> All right, is it just from California? Give, give me some numbers. To, to so, so basically, if you go back since about 2004, we have gained about 450,000 people from migration across different states. 2004, so we're talking about 14 yeah. years-ish. Yeah, exactly. And of those 450,000, 100,000 of them from California alone, and then followed very closely by Illinois and New York at about 40,000 apiece. So 40% of all the new people wait, wait. that we've gained. So all the people migrating to Colorado... A quarter of them are from California, yeah. roughly. Uh, about 20% from Illinois yeah. and New York, yeah, exactly. roughly. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I think one is like 40,000, one's like 35. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you can call it 20. All right, so yeah. 25, 20, 20. And so it's California, Illinois. California, Illinois, and New York. So the failed high tax, massive uh, bureaucratic states. Illinois, which is now just imploding on its own pension promises and oh, all yeah. sorts of problems. So they're leaving, but they're very acclimated to large government. They're very acclimated to an anti-state. These are gun control states. These, these are uh, welfare states. So no wonder Colorado is turning this, this shade of blue. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, make, it makes perfect sense. And you can actually see in the numbers, too. You can do just kind of a quick test to kind of see. Are they sending us Republicans? Are they sending us Democrats? Are they sending us unaffiliated? And you look at it, and yeah, you know, like California, they're mostly sending us unaffiliated. But we saw in the last election how those folks are voting and what their priorities are. And then, you know, we end up with this last legislative session. Right. The, the, the qualifier of Republican or Democrat used to be a terrific back-of-the-envelope way to, to see how a state or a district or your, your area is doing. That doesn't matter any, anymore. Fewer and fewer people are choosing a party. Most people yeah. are going unaffiliated at this point. If you're unaffiliated, you can go and vote in either party's primary. There's no reason to be uh, in a party unless you're going to go be involved in the caucuses that, yeah, exactly. that they have. So my, my sense is even the Republicans that are coming in from California are a lot more comfortable with big government. Or maybe they're f fed up with it, but they're fed up with a level here they come here and go, oh, this feels so good. Let's turn up the heat a little bit. Oh, yeah, exactly. They're acclimatized to something much worse. And, you know, the average, the average voter, too, you know, they tune in a month before the election. They don't necessarily draw these connections that, oh, man, we've had all this liberal overrun in California. I'm going to come to Colorado where things are cheaper. And they don't draw the connection that, oh, yeah, maybe it is so expensive because my, of these my, liberal My, my stupid analogy <laughs> is you've been to Glenwood Springs and, you know, they've got oh, yeah. the two big pools there. they got the nice warm pool and then they got the really hot pool and so you're in california illinois new york you're in the hot pool and then you come to Cal colorado and you go to the warm pool and go oh you can turn up the heat here that's okay oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um talk to me a little bit about um the rest of the growth in colorado because that doesn't account for all the growth those those three states yeah exactly who, who else is coming so in? you look over that time period and like i said we gained about four hundred fifty thousand people from folks moving here but at the same time voter registration is up by about eight hundred thousand and that's just that's one a factor of us you know going out and proactively registering people who just weren't before um, and by the way us being people on the left yes which have been killing it when it comes to getting their people or people who are likely to vote their way 
registered and then getting them to vote. Oh, yeah. I mean, I looked just a couple of months ago. Organizations reg re uh, registered to do voter registration drives in Colorado, like a dozen left-aligned organizations, one one conservative one. I mean, it's something we got to get better about doing. But So it's, it's people being newly registered, and then it's folks turning 18 and getting registered. And you can kind of see there has been a drift downwards in the balance of the age of voters in Colorado over the past couple of cycles. So that's a factor. Talk well. about the people who are coming in here destroying our once beautiful, tolerant, liberty-loving state and turning it into, into, um, uh, into Venezuela. But <laughs> People are also getting the hell out of Dodge before it gets too bad. What's the out-migration looking like? Oh, so this is an interesting one, too, because it's something that has crossed my mind as a conservative, is i got to get somewhere better. So you look, at places, <laughs> you look at places where we're losing people, too, because Colorado, for the most part, is gaining people from every state, with the exception of some places like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Arkansas, you know, traditionally right-leaning places, places where there's still some bastion of conservatism, tends to be where we're losing folks, too. Right, and I, I've, I've got family members who are on the lam now, and they are, they've gone to Wyoming. Why? Because they can't take this crap anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, they, uh, they, they want to go someplace where they can live their lives. And um, uh, it's interesting, from their point of view, I've heard that Wyoming people are like, would you Coloradans stay oh, yeah, out of here? Same thing. Well, my family's from Wyoming, so oh, really? we get the same. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I, heard that they call us greenies because of the green license, license plates. Plate. Yeah. Don't need those greenies <laughs> up here. That's funny. All right. You can't put up a wall in Colorado. I looked in the Constitution, and you're not allowed to. So you can't put up a wall to stop these people from coming out. But what, what can be done? Oh, well, that is the million-dollar question. So, you know, it's a little bit different now because we just had voter automatic voter registration come through right. the legislature. And that's going to change the dynamic a little bit. But in the meantime, it's still a race because for that to take effect, somebody has to have an interaction with the government unless we go out and proactively register them. And as you mentioned, we've just been dropping the ball on having any sort of proactive voter registration effort. You know, like we lost a couple of races this last go around that we, if we had found a thousand Republicans to register, we could have held on to. You're telling me that we can't find a thousand conservatives in an entire house district? No, right. we just gotta try. We just gotta make an effort. Well, it's, it's a problem that Republicans have, and mostly Republican donors have, that they put their money into candidates, not into infrastructure, exactly. and they don't have the patience. They wanna win in 90 days. They don't wanna win in four, eight, 12 years. And so they, they don't, they don't gotta invest in that. The left invested in that. You said there were 12 different partisan organizations registering people to vote on the left and only one on the right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's just off the top yeah. of my head. It's probably even different now, too. But they're dwarfing us on that because, like you said, they invest in the long term. And the short-sightedness there is, you know, the less that we do that, the more donors are going to have to throw behind a candidate to try and make them successful and ultimately meet with failure anyway. The, um, the other part, now that we're, everybody is registered, Everybody's going to be registered, whether you want to yeah. or not. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. They've, they've won. They've decided instead of going out to ask you if you want to be registered, they're just going to force you to be registered, which saves them step one in a two-step process. The two-step process is um, find the person that you know would vote your way if only they would vote and get them registered, and then hound them to get that that ballot that in the ballot mail. In. That, that's, right. And so it is, it is, it's not rocket surgery, it's just <laughs> hard work. You know, and um, uh, if, if we were to do that, if there was a machine as good as the left's machine, which will take years to build, could this still become a, a state where, where we're able to make our own decisions? Yeah, so I've actually, I actually looked at this specifically just recently. So if you look at the potential unregistered voters in each party, and you said, all right, tomorrow they were all registered. Um, yeah, it would be bad for Republicans, but it wouldn't be devastating. Like, you look at the environment right now, a Republican to win statewide in 2020 would probably need, like, 55% of the unaffiliated. If everyone immediately became registered via automatic re registration, we would probably need to do two points better. So that's, I mean, that's a lift for a Republican, but it's still possible. I mean, you know, Republicans, Republican governors in particular have won blue states around the country. Um, it's still doable for us. We just need to be smarter and more consistent. You said something interesting there. Your Freudian slip is showing. Republican governors have won in blue states. This ain't a purple state. It wasn't even a purple state when people said it was a purple state. Oh, no. This is a blue state. Not only is it a blue state, this is a hard-edged, progressive 
blue state. This is not the party of Roy Romer and Dick Lamb and other Aggies out there who might be more labor friendly now in office. No, the, these are hardcore urban elitists who know how you're going to live. Uh, so, so given, given that, is there really any, any possibility to win? Oh, yeah. I, I, think, know, I, yeah. Think, I think there's always a possibility. Look at 2016. So 2016 election, at the top of the ticket, we had Donald Trump, who had one of the worst performances for a Republican statewide in recent history. And then just a little bit down, you had Heidi Ganahl, who had one of the best performances for a Republican in recent history. And that's just two years ago. You know, things are getting worse. They're going to keep getting worse. And like you said, I mean, this, it's not a purple state anymore. It's blue. But we still have opportunities if we have the right candidate, the right message, and if we're actually willing to work for it. Well, let me see if I got this. We don't have the right candidate. We don't have the right message. And nobody's willing to work for it. No. So, I'm, you know, yeah, I, I so think, there we go. <laughs> I, think, I, think we're, I think we're going to be there. Um, no, and it's, it's true. The Republicans bench is, you know, we don't have a bench. We've we got a folding chair. There's just, yeah. we don't have people, we don't have the same farm team that they have. So we've got great guys like Cory Gardner, who people love and, and should get reelected. But there's no, there's, you know, we can't, we don't have the systems in place. All right, minute left. After you've done all the survey, first of all, can people see this? Oh, yeah. I mean, all, a lot of this stuff is just on my webpage. It's Constellation Political, all in word. Just go read, Constellationpolitical.com. It's yep. right there. So given that, what is your roadmap? If, if, if you could sit down with the rich guys and say, hey, this is what you need to do. So I think there's a couple of things. One of the big problems that nobody sees is that we have no up-and-coming talent among political operatives. So one, you have to have some sort of year-round organization where people can actually make a living. You know, young kids coming out of college can get involved, become field directors and become deputies and become campaign managers. And one of the things you can give them to do is to stand up an actual proactive voter registration effort, which will be necessary for probably at least the next five, seven years, even with automatic voter registration. Then you actually have to pick races to get involved in in an intelligent way, not just you know picking half a dozen and hoping you get lucky. And then three, instead of going all in on one medium when you're advertising in those races, you have to have a smart mix of advertising <laughs> that actually reaches everyone. We, we got the mailers. We got the mailers and TV. Uh, yes. Ben, thank you so much. Appreciate <laughs> thank it. Thank you, sir. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Check out the Independence Institute at thinkfreedom.org. We'll see you next week.